All right, we should be streaming live here. Hello, world. How's it going out there? My name is uh, Bliss, and I'm an engineer at Neuralink. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to the first ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Not many more of those out there. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Nolan Arval. I'm 29 years old. Well, uh, about eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4, C5. So I'm a complete quadriplegic. Uh, so I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I have no sensation uh, below my level of injury, so below my shoulders. Yeah, that, that about covers it, right? Do I do some of your dogs here? I'm yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's, um, yeah, dogs all over the place. Yeah, that's Montana, the one with the bias, Grace. Gracie. Gracie, come here. Sorry, Grace. How's it going, Gracie? Yeah. <laughs> all right. This is what you... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just here for the dogs. All right, yeah, so... um. While he's been introducing himself, um, let me just flip the camera on so you can see what uh, Nolan's been doing. Yeah. Let me come over here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah. So, uh, I love playing chess. It's one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, it was especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all, it's all being done with my brain if y'all can see the cursor moving around the screen that's that's all me y'all well, it's pretty cool huh actually can you pause the song just for the audio coming through and that was also done with your brain yep it's, just, it's all brain power up there <laughs> can you explain a little bit just to people who maybe don't have any context on this field or what's going on here how are you able to actually move the cursor yeah, so we started out with a few, trying out a few different things. Um, we basically went from what we call kind of differentiating, like imagined movement versus um, attempted movement. So a lot of what we started out with was attempting to move. So I would attempt to move, say, my right hand, left, right, forward, back. To, and um, from there, I think it just became intuitive for me to start imagining the cursor moving um basically it was like uh using the force on the <laughs> cursor and i could get it to move wherever i wanted just stare somewhere in the screen and it would move where i wanted it to um which was such a wild experience this guy was done i feel like a wizard she had it right <laughs> um it's 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 crazy it really is um it's so cool i'm so freaking lucky to be a part of this and stuff. I mean, I just, every day it seems like we're new, learning new stuff and uh, I just can't even describe how, how cool it is to be able to do this. Do you want to um, briefly talk about a little bit, um, I, I guess, what have you been using this for outside of these sort of research sessions or when you're just playing chess or some other things you've been getting value from this from? Yeah, so um, one of the first times y'all gave me complete control over this, I actually stayed up until Geez, I don't know, like 6 a.m. playing Civilization VI. Um, it was, it was worth it. <laughs> I guess is the best way to put it. It was awesome. I, I had basically given up on playing that game just because of how, I mean, it's a big game and the amount of time that it takes to sit in on it is, it's just a lot. And I have to worry about a lot of things, getting pressure sores and things like that. So I just wasn't really able to play it as much as I wanted to. And y'all gave me the ability to do that again. And I played it for, geez, like eight hours that day. Um, <laughs> so I do that. I was like it was 6 p.m. to like 2 a.m. Yeah, it was a lot. Was I'm giving awesome. you all my bad habits, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Um, yeah, it was awesome. So I did that. I read. I like learning languages. I'm learning like Japanese right now. I'm learning a bit of French. Um Maybe for, for the audience who isn't super familiar with um, mm -hmm. assistive technology, why couldn't you play Civ before? What was tricky about that or what was it about the Neuralink that made that possible for you? Yeah, so one of the big things, honestly, was that um, the, I was, I don't know, I think I just got checkmated. Um, um, the only way I could play was through uh, 
pad and that didn't allow me to play online at all. So that kind of sucked to begin with. Um, but I, would you play that like at 2 AM before or what was the Oh no, there's no way, there was no way for me to do that long because when I'm sitting up playing on say like my iPad or something, I need complete help from say my like parents or something to do it. Um, and, uh, I just didn't have that capability, um, to like keep them up all night. Well, that's just not something I would ever want to do. So basically I would have to go down and never went to bed in my house, my brother, my parents, something like that. And then on top of that, um, I can only play for a few hours at a time because, you know, I have to worry about pressure sores and stuff. I have to be readjusted. I have to do weight shifts, things like that. Just things that come in, the things that come with being a quadriplegic and stuff. So, um, it just wasn't really feasible for me to like, say, play a full game or anything. And now I can literally just lie in bed and play to my heart's content. Honestly, the biggest restriction at this point was like having to wait for the like, well, wait for the implant to charge, which I install. <laughs> so play for eight hours, have to get off and let it charge <laughs> for a while and then hopefully be able to play some more. Um, but it's been awesome. It's been so cool. And I'm kicking ass too. So in this chess game too. It's yeah. Great. No, I don't know about <laughs> with this chess game, but we'll see. <laughs> Um, and then maybe just one final question. Your mom was showing me a bunch of, um, of pictures of you in different Halloween costumes over the years. It's something that yeah. you go nuts on. So now that you have like actual, you know, force control over stuff, I, I guess that opens up the possibility space there a bit. What are you thinking to dress up as this year? Mm, I mean, something <laughs> my friends and I have been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I think I'm going to be a professor X. I think that's pretty, pretty fitting. Um, not only because he's in a wheelchair, and I think that just obviously fits <laughs> perfectly, but now I'm actually a telekinetic, basically. Uh, yeah, and so it's it's going to be cool. It's going to be real cool. <laughs> My friends and I are really excited. You're going to freak people out when you chase trick or treat. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, okay, I think that's uh, that's it for today. Anything else you want to add before uh, signing off? Mm. We got more work to do. A lot to learn about the brain here. Yeah. I mean, it's not perfect. I would say that they, we have run into some issues. I don't want people to think that it is like, this is the whole end of the journey. There's still a lot of work to be done. Um, but it has already changed my life. And I think that people who are thinking about saying applying for the human trials or are thinking about, you know, finding some way to, um, help out with this, um, to, you know, do your part. And that's the reason I got into it was because I just wanted to help. Um, I wanted to be a part of something that I feel like is going to change the world. Um, mm -hmm. I think like there's nothing to be afraid of with that. The surgery was super easy. I literally was re released from the hospital a day later. Um, I have no like cognitive impairments. Um, well, I guess none that were caused by the surgery. <laughs> oh, I beat you a chat like once. So, you know. yeah, <laughs> yeah, I. I have, I do have a pretty good record as of right now, um, as far as just like, yeah, but, um, yeah, I just think that it's really awesome. And I want to thank Neuralink on um, for doing this, for working hard every day to make this, you know, a uh, reality. I think that they are going to change the world, be a part of it. Um, so thanks guys. And I'm looking forward to releasing some of the on. So I'm not going to lie that that kind of hit hard towards the end. I was a little bit emotional, but obviously also incredibly uplifting. And this might not make sense for people that probably don't play games, don't really have a gaming background or don't do things like playing chess that can be done online. But I mean, if you imagine losing so much functionality of your ability to interact with the real world, getting that back, the very least interact with your computer and all the stuff that's available through it. I mean, that seems like a big, big deal. So here's kind of what the Neuralink looks like. So for people that maybe haven't heard of it before, so this is Elon Musk company, one of them. And we've been kind of hearing things about it for a while, but this is the first sort of unveiling of a real human, I keep wanting to say test subject. That's probably not the word that they use, trial subject. And so it's an implant brain computer interface. It's fully implantable, cosmetically invisible and designed to let you control a computer or mobile device anywhere you go. And these are kind of the parts of it. So a biocompatible enclosure, 
is hermetically sealed and withstands physiological conditions several times harsher than those in the human body. This is the battery, the N1, so they're referring to this whole thing as the N1, kind of version one of the Neuralink. The N1 implant is powered by a small battery charged wirelessly from outside via a compact inductive charger that enables easy use from anywhere. So when he's talking about having to charge it, so I haven't seen an image of it, but I assume this kind of goes on your on your forehead and induction allows you to charge it. I, I assume I, I'm going to be reading up more about this. So I apologize if I'm getting some details wrong, but he was saying he had to charge it every so often to make sure it keeps working. Then we have the low power chips that transmits wirelessly to the Neuralink application and the threads. The N1 implant records neural activity through the 10,024 electrodes distributed across 64 threads. These highly flexible, ultra-thin threads are key to minimize damage during implantation and beyond. And it's so small that you can't install it with, you know, human hands. So this little robot goes in there and installs it using kind of this needle-like apparatus. It's designed to reliably and efficiently insert these threads exactly where they need to be. And it does indeed somewhat resembles a sewing machine inserting those threads into, well, where they need to be. Let's say that. I feel like it's a little bit less terrifying that way. So these, this is the robot head. So it's got the optics and sensors. And if you zoom in, that is the needle. The needle, which is thinner than a human hair, grasps, inserts, and releases threads. And this is kind of expected to be the next generation brain-computer interface that's going to allow us to, you know, as it evolves, it becomes better, to take even more of an advantage of things like robotics and AI and, and other advancements in technology. If you think about how quickly you're able to think things versus how quickly you're able to, for example, say them out loud or even type stuff in using your hand, your ability to interact with whatever computer or whatever you're using would be much faster, much more seamless if you're able to do it with something like this. And looking at the video earlier, this seemed like it's fairly simple for him to interact and move the mouse. So here's kind of a, they have a little demonstration. How he described it, it seemed pretty, pretty simple. Like it wasn't awkward. He didn't have to struggle with it. So very exciting. Looking forward to learning more about this. My name is Wes Roth and thank you for watching.